The Aruga Podcast. Somehow somebody's always looking the other way. Now look at these guys. They look busy, right? Have you watched the History Channel after like 9 p.m. and it's just like aliens, and <laughs> yeah. Nazis, and <laughs> dude, the Cold War and in Antarctica. How there's bomb shelters in Antarctica. Oh yeah, and there's a hole in the bottom. Like no, there's actually you go to the poles <laughs> yeah. of the Earth. And no, I'm, I'm uh-huh. serious. I'm, I'm like, telling dude, you. Do you believe in hollow Earth theory? And there's we- a giant hole. It's mm-hmm. a gaping hole. And you mm-hmm. go in this hole, and what's actually down there, and what's what's actually inside the Earth. Or dinosaurs. Yes. And other, uh, more advanced humans. More advanced aliens. But these guys are the ones responsible for genetically right. engineering the first humans right. in sub-Saharan Africa right. around 200 thousand years ago. So think about us like barnacles on the bottom of a ship. You know, we just are this like gross, gross moss that Uh just that just grows on outside of the ship. But on inside the ship, there's more advanced beings. And when I refer to this ship, I mean Earth. So, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the op. Be sure to check out Aruga's shop. We make shirts and hoodies that are comfortable and stylish. Follow at Shop Aruga and visit arugastore.com. That is O R U G A store.com. Beat produced by Saipuda. Check him out at saipudabeats.com. Three, two, one. Ah! How you doing, Kyle? It's good to see you, man. It's It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. It's great to be here. The smile on your face when you talk about your girl is great. (laughs) It's great. You're all giddy. Just right off the bat. We're just going with it. For sure. I mean, you know what? Fuck it. Okay. Okay. I, I smile. I think everyone should smile when they think about their significant other. I think it's a, I think it's always a really, it's a really good thing when you just like, you think about them and you just feel exactly what you felt the first time you met them. Sure. I think sure. that's. And that means that you had a good first experience when you met her? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay. It was, it was interesting because we didn't. We eased into meeting each other because we were around each other a lot for drum corps because we okay. met, we marched to, we marched together in a DCI corps called the Cadets. Okay. And I'm in the, I was in the drum line. She was in the color guard. Classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's the color guard? What does that mean? So the color guard is a section, it's a visual performance uh, as opposed to the musical performance that the band does. Sure. The color guard like spins flags and they toss rifles. They toss. They toss everything. Mm-hmm. They toss and they spin. Um, Phallic symbols. Yeah, basically. <laughs> no. yeah. But they toss either a of flag course. or a, a rifle or a saber. Okay. Or they'll dance. Okay. Cool. And it's they do a lot of very intricate sort of stuff. Not. I don't really understand most of it. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Um, she'll explain a little bit. Um, of, like, some, the choreography? She'll explain some choreography. She'll drop, like, words, and she'll drop terms that I don't quite understand what they mean. Yeah, 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 of course. And I'll just have to be sitting there like, yep, mm-hmm, I know, I know what this means. <laughs> and then she'll explain it, and yeah, I'll yeah. just, yep, You I just know. gloss over? Well, it's not that I gloss over. It's, it's just so much to memorize. Right. I mean, it's a lot that a normal performer has to spend years to master the art, mm-hmm. like, for themselves. And so it makes it difficult to just kind of catch on to everything when you're n- simply next to it and not too committed to actually being great at it yourself. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's one thing to watch something, mm-hmm. but it's, other, it's another thing to do it. Yeah. Constantly and know what all the little intricate 
moves and yeah you can tell by somebody if somebody can speak about it well they've done it for a long time like that they call that like expert language Mm -hmm. when you start when they start speaking you're like this is a foreign language i know you're speaking the same language but you're using (laughs) terms that are like so beyond my expertise that it's like crazy right yeah and you know there's like a whole web of knowledge right about that that you're just you have no access to Mm mm-hmm it's a, I like, I like um, a great example or like a metaphor is like you painting this one spot over and over until the paint starts to mound up and turn to, into a mountain. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you're just adding a layer of paint every single day. And like eventually over years, you get this huge thing that's just like compounded and you have so much like wealth of knowledge because you've done it every day. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I brought that into it, sorry, but... (laughs) Um, It's okay, the cat is looking adorable. Yeah, she's always sweet, and she's always just so (laughs) clueless of what's going on around her. She's loafed up right now. Have you ever seen, like, those funny cat videos, like, the the real short ones, and they all... I feel like there's, there's like, grown to be communities, like, multiple of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was just scrolling through my Instagram reels, and I think it has decided to feed me into one of these communities because it's nothing but just cats looking like this <laughs> yeah with their paws tucked underneath yeah, their yeah, torso. yeah. so it's great to see c- when cats are doing that little tuck but they're laying on glass tables and, and then, then they'll they- take photos <laughs> underneath <laughs> that glass table so you get the paws just like <laughs> right. stuck like all up under here and they're just right. so fluffy and it's adorable yeah i have a soft spot for cats but they are kind of some of them can be mean and she's not one of them thank god oh no that is yes she's amazing she's um I, if i had a mean cat it would be a tough it would be a tough relationship i i'm gonna check i'm sorry i'm checking on this oh uh, no worries sure man we're ordering correctly. well actually not we um Kyle is ordering some Papa John's, right? Yes, I've got a pizza coming. Shit, oh! Shit, shit, shit! So, um, that brings me on the topic of... Dude, I, <laughs> I saw a friend today, and this friend is a white guy. Classic. And he has, and he has no affiliation with anything gangster at all but he always throws gang signs when i see him and i'm like dude what are you doing we're in public right now I'm like this shit's so emba-. like i literally say it to it every time this shit's so embarrassing stop throwing gang signs you saw in a rap video like what are we doing right now dude, he just wants you to commit to the bit he right. wants you to like dab him up you're like hey let's go and say something no. like that shit's so good to see you dude she's so good <laughs> she yeah yeah, right. I need this Papa track, uh, man. Yeah. Whenever you have a pizza order coming on the way, do you ever just like sit there and, and just watch it and just watch it right. drive to you? Mm-hmm. Especially with DoorDash, I, occasionally I'll do some DoorDash and I'll watch the person go to other restaurants as they're picking up other orders and going to other people's houses and I, <laughs> the the rage. Or just the, like, what the fuck are you doing? You have my food. You're letting it get cold so you can get other people's food? How dare you? And, um, (laughs) yeah, it's so addicting. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. I think the whole thing that I can see where where my deliverer is... Like, where the person is driving, that seems like such a problematic Mm -hmm. thing. Why should I, a person who just paid for food, get to watch where someone is now? Like, that's so weird. Like, that's, like... That's but you a, get to watch where your food is going. That's so crazy. <laughs> Do you get to watch where your food's going? That's so stupid. Like, you get to watch your hot dog. It's like... Just go would you want to be a deliverer, though, and have motherfuckers like us watching where you're going, though? Like, you know what I mean? It just I feels so pizzas. weird. Okay. Do you actually? I do that. Okay. How do you feel about it? I don't care. You don't care? I'm on the job. (laughs) Okay. They know I'm coming. But it's your phone that's tracking you though, right? Well, they're they're tracking... So, I don't actually know. This is a secret that I've never been made privy to, to be honest. Okay. Because... How they track you? I think it is in the car toppers. Oh. But... 
But they look so old, and right. like you can't ha- like. But you're gonna put a tracking device in the car. A fucking is? GPS tracking device that connects know. to a fucking satellite. When I miles first... in the sky, that's <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. And they're using it to track a pizza, right? A circle of bread with tomato paste and cheese right. on it. The American special. I put my heart, my blood, my sweat, my tears to this game, and. History, we in the record books. The Aruga Podcast has united with the Galactic Federation. With worldly symbols and alien logos, we celebrate our galaxy with new merch. Hope you love it and Godspeed. The American special. Yeah, yeah, and we call it Italian food, but it's not. <laughs> well, it, it is kind of actually, okay. or it was. Pizza was. Isn't more Greek? Well, I mean, there's. The concept of taking bread and putting stuff on it mm-hmm. is really old. That's and fair. There's very fuzzy lines as to what you could count as pizza. Mm-hmm. So it makes it really kind of difficult, but in Rome. Pizza was like, or a thing that was like pizza. Okay. Was. Like frap, like flatbread with some vegetables over top of it. Yeah, it's smeared bullcrap. Mm-hmm. Was just like poor people food. It was like the. Okay. Just what poor people would have to eat. For sure. That's all they could, that's like. It's it's like the scraps, right? Basically. It was just so cheap and easy. I mean, they had so many other options, too, for right. cheap and easy food. But it was it was never really a, considered a luxurious food item. Not not that it is now, but... It's definitely not. It doesn't even matter. God, yeah. no. But, like, if I could think of some of the best food, it's usually going to be pizza or mm-hmm. something something of the some kind of food like that right have you have you had um like other cities pizza like have you had like new york style pizza or like when you've gone to new york or have you gone to chicago and like had their deep dish so i've never been to new york or chicago um actually that's a lie about new york but i have not been to new york with money and Autonomy. I went when I was in elementary school. I was okay. in, th- in the third grade. I went for the summer because mm-hmm. my dad had a business trip and my sure. mom was, I think she was in Washington, D.C. And my dad was having a business trip in New York. Okay. So we went with my dad to New York and my dad got one of his co-workers daughters who was a caregiver to basically babysit us for three days i don't know how they managed to work that arrangement out okay but she was probably compensated very well um but we would we went to like the intrepid museum and we walked that was was the most walking that nine-year-old me had ever done okay Okay. i had like we walked 10 blocks and to the intrepid museum from the hotel Um, and the Intrepid Museum is, I feel like I'm going on a tangent here with my trip to New York, but the, I, I'm a big fan of like aircraft carriers and just aircraft and like aeronautics and just air and space technology shenanigans and just that whole kind of industry. Mm-hmm. And seeing an aircraft carrier and being up close to one was really cool but we didn't really do much pizza venturing when i was there okay so we i'm never been to new york yet either but when i go there i don't think pizza is going to be my staple food that i'm going to you know go and eat because there's so many cultures there there's so many like mm-hmm. little like Going to Chinatown would be cool. Like, the Italian food in New York is supposed to be pretty good, too. And, like, there, I remember there was a thing um, when the fires were happening up in Canada. They somehow sneaked a law in New York that um, they have to reduce emissions. 
Um, so they forced business owners who have wood stoves, like wood brick stoves for pizza joints to reduce their sales. So those pizza joints wouldn't produce so much emissions and smoke and in, smoke into the air, which is uh-huh. ridiculous. But that, <laughs> that's, that's so ridiculous. So, that's so crazy. <laughs> because it's like the fires weren't ha- like the emission. I'm sure New York has a high emissions rate, of course, because there's so many cars and just bullshit. Mm-hmm. But like that's so crazy that they had to reduce the sales of pizza joints because of the fire or the smoke that's produced from like wood stoves. Like what the fuck, wood. dude? Wood stoves. That's crazy, right? Like that's so naughty. <laughs> so, um, uh, but yeah, I can't wait to go to New York. I have a, um, I have a buddy that like shits on New York because he went once and he was like, "Fuck that place! I hate it! I'm going to live in the fucking middle of nowhere, like cornfields, because that shit's pl-. like, yeah." But um, I mean, urban environments are loud. They're stressful. They're cramped. They're stinky. They can get hot in the summers. Mm-hmm. But there's but there's so much good food. There's, there's beautiful so museums. There. There's comedy like, clubs everywhere. Pro. So are you are you pro urban? Yeah. Life. Oh 100%. yeah. hundred percent. I think I'll probably have a. a pure split i'll probably like in my youth i'll probably like love to go like live in cities and all that Mm. but like once i like settle down have a family i'll probably want to live on the outskirts of a nice city but that's me at you know 22 who knows i'll change my opinions eventually i'm sure (laughs) but yeah i want to live in new york at least once or chicago or chicago chicago yeah um i think it would be I've personally never been one to want to live in a city because you pay for way more than you need to okay. to exist. Sure. Just simple existence costs more. Mm-hmm. Um, which, I mean, if I'm, if I'm like, really rich, it's not going to be a problem. Sure. But then okay. there's the problem of getting really rich to right. deal with that. That's true. Um, but then there's also... But they get to walk everywhere, dude. Oh, to walk everywhere, so badass. I know, but um, but like, you don't have to get in your little modular car and be separated from everybody. You like the things I love about living where I live now is that I have to pass crackheads on the side of the street that passed out on benches, and that's fun. Like you get like a little spectacle every time you walk somewhere, and that shit's. I don't know. I find that to like have a silver lining you get to be like part of like the ecosystem you get to see everybody in their hustle and bustle like when you're in your car driving to the city you need to go to you're having the rustle and bustle you're in your car you're focused on getting to your destination mm-hmm. but like when you're walking around you can like check your heart rate <laughs> like <laughs> simple shit now that is that that does seem really nice the there comes with the caveat of just You pay more to live, and mm-hmm. having a lot of other people around you can be inconvenient sometimes. It's true. It's true. Living in an apartment as a musician can be inconvenient. Okay. So urban areas are difficult to live in. Mm-hmm. Um, let's like get an electric drum set. Um, and then that changes everything. That changes everything because okay. then I don't have to live in a house. I've mm-hmm. always been on the like residence market to look for a house to get like me, three other people mm-hmm. and just split up a house. Okay. Like me and three other roommates. That's that's your renting plan, I'm assuming. That that's my renting plan. Yeah. And um we, what we would do is we would basically turn that house into a big hub for everything. Yeah. So, like... Right. If... If, per se, it was me and, like, a bunch of buddies and we were in a band. Mm-hmm. We would use that... We would turn that house into a studio. And that was the right. dream for a minute. Yeah. That was the dream for a bit, but then uh, we lost... Uh, but then you gotta live with those people. 
Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. You don't really? Okay. No, I've done. Okay. We lived with each other in drum corps. It's fine. Okay. Okay. And that's and totally fair. That just teaches you how to. That teaches going to sleep in a gym floor full of like 150 people around you, mm-hmm. and just being able to tune them out and just go to bed is like, it's fine. Okay. Um, there was one, um, this was about three or four years ago, but I was like searching for a house to live in mm -hmm. and, um, I found this house that was like a thousand dollars a month and Mm -hmm. I got, and it had a, it was either four or five bedrooms and I got four other people to live in that house and to pay for it. So we were about to split 200 or 250 a month for living in a house in a house bro and i was that's like, the dream it's the it, and it was the house was right by the river too and there was a park right in front of the house and like beautiful neighborhood and like the house is a little shitty so that's why it was a thousand a month okay. but like man it like it, i still dream about <laughs> like, you still i still dream about that you would still situation try to do that oh because like because i dead ass I ha- Ben wants to get a studio mm-hmm. in either Atlanta mm-hmm. or like LA. Yeah, yeah. And um, I would really want to get in on that to get also get a studio because that helps me immensely with everything that I want to do for my career too. Right. And being able to like partner up and like split the cost of a studio and share it for each of our career purposes would be like a really good move yeah for us for sure and um well basically the the what i'm trying to say is if that's isn't it interesting how like you have to go to atlanta or la for a good pool of people creatively well if you want to like network around them in person without flying it's kind yeah. of annoying is there's like no real who's music? out here right who's in cincinnati dude like barely anybody like it yeah i don't know at least with the like at least with the music industry the music industry is like non non-existent you would have to go to nashville to have at least some representation of like the music industry mm-hmm but yeah, I'm sorry I cut you off. Like I I don't even remember what I was saying. Mm. Would you want to get attention. a house with Ben? Is that the plan? That was what I was cu- kind of getting at. Mm-hmm. However, um, I still think we would need more people For to sure. split it up and be more cost effective than an apartment. Mm-hmm. Well, good luck. Godspeed, man. Mm-hmm. Godspeed. Um, yeah. That's interesting. I, um, I don't even know if I should talk about this, but I guess I, sh- I I'm talking to like a little like, uh, like a low nonchalant rapper right now, mm-hmm. and I'm trying and um, I'm trying to make music covers for him. So like, and he's from Atlanta, and like the thing is like texting about like business stuff like that, like is horrible and i just like wanted to call him or like meet up with him but he's in atlanta and um yeah yeah that is where the music industry is i know i know i um i don't know when but i've been trying to get out of cincinnati and ohio eventually Mm -hmm. however I still have a couple more years that I'm able to do this drum line that I'm in. Mm-hmm. It's in the area that I've basically made my home for the last five years. Yeah. Um, I like the time check. <laughs> <laughs> you know, five years. <laughs> five years. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm manifesting that Rolex right there. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, Rolexes are for our own. No. No. Not for Kyle. You're not a you're not a watch guy. Oh, but when I get the money, you never know, man. Oh, you never know I what kind be of tempted. <laughs> I'll know. be so tempted I to know. get like I'll just be so tempted to splurge mm-hmm. all over. Um, I think my car would be the first thing I'd start thinking about splurging. Mm-hmm. Like it, I know that's cars are just bottomless pits of non. 
investment. You'll never get your bang for your buck when you put money into your car. But the thing is, man, just to have like a nice car with nice rims and you're like, shit, dog. Like, I got it. I have a Jeep Wrangler, and like, man, it'd be so cool to have like cool bumpers and just cool rims and just like, <laughs> shit, dog. We just took out the cloth seats. We're putting gator leather gator, in here. Shit. Not the gator leather. <laughs> Fuck off with the gator leather. I'll have white no. leather. <laughs> I'm gonna be driving my fucking rinky dink shagging wagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a Mercedes. Fuck it. I'm driving a Benz. Mm hmm. Yeah, you're driving a Nazi car. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm pr- I'm feeling pretty pretty fascist about that. It's how dare you, man? How dare I'm sorry. you? Sorry, it's just it's you know. Can I lay a crazy fact on you? Because this like boggles my mind. When yes. NASA after World War II, NASA hired a um the head. NASA hired a Nazi to be head of NASA mm. after World War II. Wow, that's crazy. They, what's even crazier is that like. That's what that's got us just... to the moon. Dude, <laughs> 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 it's the German engineering. What am I telling uh, you? No, they were the best at ballistic or not ballistics, but uh, missiles. They were the best at missiles and just like. <laughs> And they, rocketry. I mean, like, that was their... They were, like... They were the first ones to have a rocket, um, like, successfully go to England and bomb one of London's, like... I, that sounds have you, horrible. I, I don't... Have you watched the History Channel after, like, 9 p.m.? And it's just, like, aliens <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Nazis and... <laughs> Dude, the Cold War and in Antarctica, how there's bomb shelters in Antarctica. Oh yeah, and there's a hole in the bottom. Like, no, there's actually you go to the poles yeah. of the Earth, and no, I'm, I'm uh-huh. serious. I'm, I'm telling you. Do you believe in hollow Earth theory? And there's we- a giant hole. It's mm-hmm. a gaping hole, and mm-hmm. you go in this hole, and what's actually down there, and what's what's actually inside the Earth, are dinosaurs. Yes. And other, uh, more advanced humans. More advanced aliens. But these guys are the ones responsible for genetically right. engineering the first humans right. in sub-Saharan Africa right. around 200,000 years ago. So think about us like barnacles on the bottom of a ship. You know, we just are this like gross, gross moss that uh-huh. just that just grows on s- outside of the ship. But on s- inside the ship, there's more advanced beings. And when I refer to this ship, I mean Earth. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for comfortable and stylish apparel? Something right up your alley? Aruga has a collection for you. Monochrome features sleek black and white designs. The Work Week in Thermal features pops of vibrant color. Check out arugastore.com for unique styles and streetwear. Um, gosh, I went down a rabbit hole of Antarctica crap, of like all the conspiracies that go with Antarctica and how the U.S. military has huge bases that um, serve as secondary governments if nuclear war goes down and how the Pentagon has basically a support system when nuclear war does happen. And then, like, yeah, dude, how there's, like, fucking sound rays that destroy... I don't know. There's, like, there's so much deep conspiracy on youtube about antarctica like i i think i consumed an unhealthy amount of it <laughs> because oh my God. it's so crazy did you dude have you ever seen the the laser gun that the military has wait the, the, i've seen it's like a microwave gun that's basically what it is it's but was it the one that's on the boat yeah yeah or the one that's from like space no, this is on, so the U.S. military released YouTube videos on their official YouTube channel. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> and they were talking about how in 2010 they made this laser gun that could shoot at the speed mm-hmm. of light. Let's just absorb that for a second. Well, it shoots at the fucking speed of light. It's, what's it shooting at the speed of light? 
I, what they say is, I, from my understanding, is microwaves. So, okay, so it's like, so it's shooting light at the speed of light. I, th- I I think it's like a almost like a heat form of combustion that it that it shoots. So like they were doing tests of like a boat that was like miles away mm-hmm. from the battleship, and they aimed at the at that ship, and then they shot at the speed of light and it's just like you see these metal rods that have no ability to combust you know what i mean there's just like no ability for these metal rods because they have no gasoline on them they have no nothing but then they just explode of and because they show in the camera of uh-huh. the boat and it, they, it just explodes and you're like what the yeah. fuck just happened like and um yeah That was their video, which was really interesting. It was like a 30 or 40 second, like nonchalant thing where it's like these weapons will be equipped to most battleships because this is good anti, um, anti nuke deterrence, anti nuke deterrence. Well, it sounds like just like what being able to weaponize light that like so nothing can go faster than light. Nothing can go the speed of light. Right. I'm nerding out for a minute because light is massless. Mm-hmm. The photon mm-hmm. has no mass. Right. Which is. And when you when you go into like the foundations of physics, mm-hmm. you're completely correct. There's nothing faster than light. We're actually we're in an expanding universe right now, and the universe only expands to how fast light is so well, it's it's the that is some existential level like understanding like yes the universe is expanding what's even crazier is like it's not so much that the universe itself is like a physical object that's getting bigger whereas everything inside of it is getting equally further apart from the things around it Mm-hmm. And it's almost like if you were to, like, put everything, like, on a canvas, and then you were just to magically shrink the footprint of everything. You've just made the canvas between the things grow. Okay. Relative to whatever's in it. Mm-hmm. Have you ever looked at the shapes of the, uni- the universe or the theories of what mm-hmm. the shapes are? It's so crazy how many ideas there are and how the universe is shaped. Mm-hmm. And it's like, there's, there's... Well, it's a four-dimensional shape. Okay. Have you seen the... Have you, have you ever seen a tesseract? Yeah. That's a fuckery one, man. So... Jesus, that's a fuckery one. Because you can talk... <laughs> can I... Before we go into the tesseract thing, I so I want to go into this idea that... Um, the way we understand it- in intelligence, the way, like, let's say if I wanted to quantify your intelligence, uh-huh. I would put a piece of paper, a 2D thing, and I would test you. But me and you live life in a 3D world. So how could you test well, me on a 2D paper? And you know what I mean? So, like, the fact that you lose... When you say test... What do you mean? Like traditional, just like um, a question, and then you have four options for the answer. And then after your, let's say, ten questions, I'll quantify how you did on that test. Right? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. But then that's a 2D representation of what your intelligence is. But we live in a 3D world. Well, we live in a... What? Well, you're going to be like, we live in a 4D world. We live, in, we live in an AD world. world. Bro, there's fucking 27 dimensions. What are we talking about? Well, you see, I, I, I'm starting to think that people uh, are using the word dimension just to describe different things. Okay. Um, whereas, like, the dimensions of space, like the spatial dimensions, mm-hmm. like uh, length, width, height, and time, those describe, like, the entire universe and everything in it. Okay. Throughout all four of those dimensions describes the single object that is all of existence. Are you saying that the fourth dimension is time? Yeah. 
and it's a spatial dimension. Interesting. And whereas, like... Ah, uh, that's actually sick. Like, a good, a good thought of... Like, me trying to represent this would be in the um, Interstellar movie. Mm -hmm. At the end, when he's, like, going through the idea of going through time, but it's in the spatial representation. Yeah. That was a bit more of a cinematic kind of... Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's it's more conceptual. Right. Because we can't actually perceive that. Because we are three-dimensional... Mm-hmm. creatures living in a four-dimensional reality right so we can't really that's why there's so many things about our universe that confuse us is because it's not under obli- any obligation to make sense to us mm-hmm. so there's just things that are unfathomable that just exist and there's nothing we can do about it we can jot down our little numbers and write our little commute like write our little equations right. point our little telescopes at anywhere mm-hmm. and but the like our brain is just too small to understand it all yeah yeah that's why we need ai we just need that big brain we just need it anything that's gonna be able to exist and think within the universe Mm -hmm. is not going to be able to fully understand it the full universe yeah because it itself is a part of it Okay. Nothing that's able to think. Because, like, our brains are the universe. They're made of the parts of the universe. Mm -hmm. The energy that goes through them itself is a part of the universe. And we are, therefore, all parts of it. Um, Which means anything that we're able to understand and think about is going to have to... Like, our brain has to be complicated enough to be that intelligent to understand it. Mm -hmm. And you run into, like, a spiral where, in order, like, your brain's got to be this complicated to understand this thing, but in order to understand this thing, it's got to be that complicated. And in order for it to understand, it's, in order for something to understand itself, it has to be more complicated than itself. Okay. And that's... Okay. And uh, that's, that's, that's basically the premise of Gödel's theorem, which is that anything that is inside the universe can't really fully comprehend its own nature. It's pretty badass. Kinda. I gotta, I gotta be honest. Like to be one of those great minds to just like be able to look at the big picture. Like I was. Uh, have you ever researched the Drake equation? I have not. The Drake equation goes over the idea of how much alien life would be in the universe, and then they go over the foundation of, like, okay, what causes life, how many planets are in a solar system, how many how many stars are in the galaxy, how many galaxies are there, and how many races of life would be able to reach this point where they can enter, like, they can travel through space and travel to distant stars. And it, it's just this compilation of, like, how much intelligent life would be out there that mm-hmm. travels the stars. And it's just, like, to be able to have that big picture is phenomenal. I mean, that's, that's so cool. I mean, that's really so badass just to be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? To be yeah, like, I I, because the, to be able to, like, you can't talk about this with the person that you're walking down the street and you're like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it, they'll just look at you like you're crazy. Right, right. They'll look at you like, dude, I got to pay my taxes like tomorrow. What are you talking to me about the, the universe, the galaxies? Dude, I, I live in, you know, I live in this country. I live in this state. There's a football game on on Saturday. What are you talking to me about this? You know, these aliens out there, like nobody gives a shit. And it's so fascinating, like the... um this is so far from the normal conversations that go on, mm-hmm. you know, like, hey, have you like, have, do you have those friends where you like, you start talking to them, you're like, shit, we're in these boring conversations about, you know, how, you know, they're like, I got to do my laundry today. Oh, I got to, you know, yeah, it, I, I got to go comprehend the like, universe, the universe <laughs> yeah. and the <laughs> And the, the, we're all a part of the universe, man. If Me you think and you about are the it, same. If you think about it, where does your body stop and the universe begins? What is you? Mm-hmm. Are you your arm? Mm. Or are you not your arm? I my favorite 
thing is, what were you before you were born? Mm-hmm. What's that deep down feeling you have before you were born? Well, the universe itself is this single object, big, okay, four-dimensional object. There's the past, there's the future, there's the beginning, there's the end. It's not linear. That's not actually the end and that's not the beginning. It's just okay. a big old thing. So you believe in string theory? That the universe starts and stops continuously? Well, it's not that it starts and, s- and stops continuously. It's that time is a dimension of the universe. And the universe is a single concept. Mm-hmm. The single concept of everything. Okay. There's not a beginning. There's not an end. Mm-hmm. There's just nothing past that point, And there's just nothing past this point okay okay and it's kind of like either side of it can look whatever way that it wants the point is um do you talk uh, about this with your first date i have (laughs) talked about this with rachel yes yeah oh rachel yeah yeah yeah. that's her name yeah yeah um i have talked about this with her Mm -hmm. we we have gone down a number of existential rabbit holes okay that normal normal people don't talk about right because that's not what normal people talk about it's not no it's not it's really not no it's not yeah (laughs) it's it's crazy to me how much people don't talk about like those Mm -hmm. crazy concepts because you bore me to death if you want to talk about everyday shit you know but like the real questions at life like what are you what you are know, you? What are you? Is what your, is this life right is, now? is your consciousness a physical object or is it a separate dimension of space in which your soul resides? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, you look around you and all you actually see is the images that your brain has rendered from just seeing. Mm-hmm. But it looks like you're just in a... Like, you're in the world and obviously you're in the world and you're, like... I'm at this table. I yeah, am yeah. at this table. Right. But and what I, I... I feel this table. This table feels hard. This, this exists in my mind. But you know how... Um, um, do you know how, like, yeah. there's, like, uh, these atoms technically all have space in between them? Mm-hmm. And then, like... But then all... So do my... My hands have atoms with all space in between them, too. So how does my hand not just go right through this table? But I feel it as, like, a hard service. There, I think there is a magnetic reason to that. Because I'm mass and this is mass? Because, I, yes, I think so. <laughs> That's fucking insane. Something, something like that. There is a reason, and I don't know it mm-hmm. entirely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to trade headphones just for fun. Just so you get the experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, I'm going to have a mic that's, like, upon, um, like, those big old arms so that it doesn't pick up any audio of this stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, this this is a, this is me patting the table to feel the <laughs> atoms lining up perfectly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's try, a- that, try that at home. Just, like, feel the atoms on the table. Yeah. <laughs> So how long did it take until you started bringing those conversations up with Rachel? Uh, Immediately? Or did you, like, ease in? They were really early because I wanted to, like, see what she was about. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be... I didn't want to end up where I, like, meet someone and I get into a relationship with them. And then I find out something about them that I just, like didn't notice like okay. oh i can't talk to this person about this subject right that's really annoying because right. i love it so much mm-hmm. and i made sure to not have that yeah. i made sure to talk about all of my special interests this goes for like i mean special interests are something that you should always bring up with someone that you want to, to spend a lot of time spend with. a lot of time with for like sure. what are you interested in because these are going to be the things that I'm going to talk about. These to are the going to end be of time that I'm going to care about for the rest of my life. And if right. you're not able to meet me on that and also care about the things that I care about. Mm-hmm. We're like, going to have a lot of uncomfortable conversations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or at least course. if you don't care to know what they are. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know everything there is to know about Color Guard. Okay. Because... 
that is a that's a rabbit hole that yeah. I'll have to take a lot of time to learn. And I'm also not fluent in sign language. My girlfriend is fluent in sign language. That's awesome. ASL. Um, and do you ever throw some fun ones at her, like bullshit or? Um, <laughs> Oh man, I used to know so. <laughs> I used to know all the bad words. <laughs> I used to know all the bad, like what, like vagina and penis, uh-huh. and, like all that shit. It's so fun, actually. I I, I used to uh, like. People always used to like just make something up and then say it was a bad word because yeah. I would have someone tell me like six different things that all meant fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's more of like a gesture. Because mm-hmm. like some of, some things aren't like an outward word. You have to have kind of paint the picture. It's like um, when you have to say asshole. I remember this chick was like she would do the one for V for vagina. And she's like no, not that one. Oh, asshole? No, not that one. The bridge in between is the taint. Like, that kind of stuff. And it's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. The bridge in between. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like, I loved all that shit. It's so mm-hmm. funny. Um, but yeah, sign language, sign language is a cool one. That's really cool. But you know that, that there's different languages of sign language? I did, actually. So, there's also, like... S- Signed exact English, which is, you can, there's ASL, which is its own language, mm-hmm. and then there's English in sign, which is not its own language, Okay. because it's just English, but right. all the words have a sign translation, which mm-hmm. is really kind of weird, because you think to yourself, well, why is that not just its own language? Which, but... The reason why that's not its own language is because it changes with English. When English changes, like over time, sign exact English also has to change to and adapt a, and adapt. Wow! Because you'll be using English words yeah, with yeah. your hands, with English grammar with your hands, and mm-hmm. that follows whatever English does over time. Okay. And ASL. Is it's separate. Its own complete separate thing. It's got its own grammar that's independent of English. That's cool. Mm-hmm. It always like baffles me that there are different sign languages. Like why? It's so crazy. You know what I mean? Like well, you would but, think you would think that they would be able to pull that shit off like uniformly, but no. Why? I why? mean, I, vocal languages. There's multiple vocal languages. That's totally true. That's totally true. I don't know. It's fascinating that we haven't pulled off a universal language yet. I mean, we're so together with... There's this concept that um, we're the most connected generation. Um, it's They say it's homo connectus. I mean, we've been able to do that with independent countries. Aren't okay. They? They've been able to pull off national languages. Mm-hmm. The, the problem with global language is then you have the globalists. Yeah. <laughs> I know. No. So, what did they call that? The they, global cons- I don't know. There's oh, so many global conspiracy theories, I know. like about because um, it used to be painted as like the Illuminati, but then they, but then there was like another. Um, oh my gosh, I totally forget what they call it. Well, I think at this point it's just been like a bunch of people trying to tell the same story in seven thousand different ways. New World Order. New World Order. The That's New what World I always Order. heard of as. The uh-huh. New World Order was like the people who want to take over all the governments and just want to become one hive. One big old hive mind. Right. Um, there's also the World Economic <laughs> Forum. You want to talk about oh, that one? Where they don't want you to own your cars anymore. They want you to rent no. your fucking cars. They, you don't get to own anything. Right. You will own nothing and you we'll will be, be happy. happy. Dude, I want to fucking slap whoever fucking made Klaus that. Klaus Schwab. <laughs> you get to yeah. go slap him. Dude. Where's this pizza? Hold on, I'm checking my phone. That's such an insane concept, by the way, because like... Uh, how could you be happy and own nothing? Like, I get it. Um, the idea of owning things is a pretty Western uh, concept of being able to own my land and own my uh, things. But the fact that somebody's going to be like, you're going to rent everything. You're going to have to be slave labor all your life if you mm-hmm. want to be able to afford everything. Which, like, it just goes back into the separation of classes and, like, 
you know, no matter what culture you go to, there's always a class system. And that fascinates me. It doesn't matter what parties you're talking about, what political systems you're talking about. There's always a class system. Well, the human cycle really is like you, you create a country and it's fair and democratic off the start. Mm-hmm. And there's not a separation from the people who run it and the people who live in it. Okay. Um, Beautiful concept, by the way. Sounds like a utopian society. (laughs) Well, it starts off that way because the people who run it used to just be people who lived in it. Right, yeah. And then eventually, as generations go by, people are born into power. They're born into that power from the people who started the country. And then eventually, after like a couple hundred years, social class divide separates to a point of like revolution. Mm -hmm. And then... Well, it just I restarts. Which, I forget which American founding father said that uh, governments go stale after 200 years and that you need to have a little uh, restart to be able to have a fresh functioning government. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, man. We're at that, what, 250 years old for the United States of America? So, like, I don't, I don't and what know. And was, what was 50 years ago? The World War Two. Cold War. Cold War. World War Two. Yeah. yeah. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. And uh, did we ever? Did we ever like make good on everything with all of that? No, we didn't. No. 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 There was a lot of people who went to Argentina. There was a lot of people who made Adidas and Mercedes. Oh. oh. We don't like those things. Ouch. But I'm still buying A D I D A S because I love that shit. Three stripes, homie. <laughs> Three stripes, dude. The Adidas joggers, man. I'm sorry, you can't. Uh, yeah. What are those things called? The fits. The um. Track suits. Track suits. Track suits. Yeah, it's a big popular thing, man. Track suits are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know how you get around that. I guess Ruga's gonna have to make some track suits eventually, but. We'll see. Jogger pants style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy a shirt, arugastorage.com. <laughs> <laughs> what a plug-in. <laughs> what a plug. That's hilarious. Yeah. Man, I didn't even get to show you the uh, Galactic Federation uh, commercial. Dude, uh, after this, I'll show you it mm-hmm. because it's so, like, it just makes me laugh because it's so ridiculously hilarious. Update. Um, <laughs> it's Pizza. just uh, is it here? Uh, no, I okay, don't okay. know what it's doing. It is. You know, if if they get here in ten minutes, that means we could just cut off, eat, and then we can go to um, because we got we got some plans after this. We're gonna go to a we're gonna tour a um. What is it? It's like a power facility. Gosh, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna read the email because, um. Kahaya, a a regular guest on this show, is inviting me to a class tour of a power plant near Cincinnati, and we will see uh, two large gas turbines, two gas coal wood chip furnaces, and also chilled watered facilities. I mean, like, it's going to be fascinating. Um, I can't wait for that. That's at 315. Wait, is that a class tour? Yeah, yeah, but we're allowed because I don't know why. But like, he's just bringing us along, which interesting. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be fun. So he's allowed a plus two. Oh, he's gonna. We're bringing three people. He's bringing his girlfriend too. Oh, so it's word. gonna be a plus three. It's gonna be a plus three. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna be hilarious. That's but gonna he's gonna be, be picking us up in his Nazi car as well. He's got BMW. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm excited for that one. Okay. Well, this. Unfortunately, does not have an ETA on yeah. the pizza. No worries, man. Oh. Have you gone on any fun dates with Rachel yet? Um, we don't. We didn't have time during the summer for <laughs> yeah. really anything because okay. the average drum corps day was like. I mean, you would sleep in the gym. Mm-hmm. Of whatever school you were rehearsing at. And you I were, heard you before. That's insanity, yeah. by the way. That's and, so insanity. <laughs> How military would, is that? <laughs> uh, not really. It's okay. not that strict about, like, how... 
it's not very regimented about like how you conduct yourself at all times. Okay. Um, but there's a couple th- things that you do need to keep organized. You okay. l- like you'll ideally want to keep all your stuff organized just for safety, reason. safety yeah. and uh, not losing your shit. Right. Right. Um, but like you don't have to set up anywhere specific. They'll just divide the gym into two halves and you'll have your own air mattress. You'll blow it up and you'll just sleep wherever. They separate by gender? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> because if they didn't... What? Well, what? people fuck on tour. Oh, yeah, of course. And, and they fuck in the gyms. Of course they do. Yeah, yeah. of course. Just and under the blanket. Just be quiet. Yeah. I never <laughs> yeah. did. Oh, yeah. Um, what a good soul. What a good soul. Now, I, would get, I got an Airbnb on... Okay. Um, we had a free day when we had our show in San Antonio. The next day we had off, like okay. nothing. So we got an Airbnb and just spent the day in an Airbnb. Cool. With Rachel. Cool. Great. So that was the only fun <laughs> date you had? Well, no, we just didn't really, we didn't really go on many dates. We went on an IHOP date when she was staying at my house. Okay. We were basically just trying to make up for all the time we couldn't spend together because we were rehearsing and performing shows. Mm-hmm. Um... What would so be your, just, what would be your ideal date? Where would you want to take her? Would you want to do like the? Would you want to do like classy? Like take her to, like a so museum or would like? Oh would you well, we do? did go to a, the National History Museum, Smithsonian, That's in fucking DC awesome. when I flew out to see her last week. Okay, she lives in DC. She lives in, uh, she lives in Calvert County. Maryland, which is really close to Baltimore. Okay, okay. And she goes to school at Towson University. Okay. So. That's just one over my head, but that's okay. Yeah, I'll it's just all like just my head and be like, yeah, for sure, bro. Maryland. Yeah, yeah. The coast. Okay. That area. Yeah. DC, close by. Mm-hmm. Thumbs I'm up. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I got a, I have a friend who lives in DC, and same thing it's like mm-hmm. they describe and i'm like yeah for sure yeah yeah I, totally yeah i know, know what you're talking about I've yeah been there. yeah totally no what? It's my stomping grounds bro mm-hmm. like oh around the corner that's like my favorite joint to go to yeah yeah, yeah. Just, i'm out here with the cornfields and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but um we would so i want to i would love to go hiking but mm-hmm. that's going to be a multi-day thing. So for date, I'm not going to obsess over the word date. I'm just going to assume activity, just a anything involving planning. me and her. So right, of course. Well, I really want to go. I would love to get an RV, and go around, like, rural. Oh, I got. I'm getting a phone call. We're getting a phone call. I'm getting a phone call. Hold on. Oh shit. Hello. Yep. All right, hold on. I'm going to meet you out there. All right, we're gonna pause, people. I'm so Pizza sorry. Is here. All right. Okay, we're we're still rolling. Okay. Um, Wait, we were still rolling. <laughs> oh no, not like I just wanted to make sure that um, when I hit record that it still records on the the main file if that makes sense and oh, it doesn't okay. create a separate file dude it there's just so much little shit with the program that i just try to make sure that it goes smoothly but um yeah thank you so much for listening and we're uh since kyle ordered some pizza we're gonna fucking dig into some pizza and i almost dropped the dr pepper i think that was a dr pepper i'm really not sure but it is I hope that thing doesn't spray all over the fl- uh, all over the walls. It. That's sick. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Thanks for listening, and thank you for having me. You know, of course, man, of <laughs> course. And we got to be ready. Visit arugastore.com today and enter the discount code OP15 for 15% off your order on all Aruga merch. Free shipping for orders over $50 is available as well. Thank you. The Aruga Podcast. Somehow somebody's always looking the other way. Now look at these guys. They look busy, right?